everyone, welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and today our guest is Nagina. Nagina is a new Vermonter. She fled her home and her life in Afghanistan and arrived in Brattleboro in April of 2022. She has degrees in both law and art. Nagina is one of the art lords. This is a group of Afghan artists who started a global grassroots movement using art for peace building and social transformation five of whom have resettled here in Brattleboro. I'm sure many of you have noticed the powerful and beautiful murals that are on our walls here in town. Welcome, Nagina. Thank you so much. Thank you for, ha for taking your time and having me in your beautiful show. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's, it's wonderful to have you on, and I'm so glad um, we have you on. And partly, it's as I said, many folks have noticed the murals in town and just the... Um, the power of them, it's going to be great to hear a little bit more about that for all of us. We were talking the other day and I realized, oh, you were born right before, just a year or two before 9-11, before all kinds of things transformed in Afghanistan. And I wonder if you could give us a snapshot of what that was like growing up in this country that was home for you, where your family has lived for a long, long period of time. I was born in my place beloved country of Afghanistan and it was for me it's it's like home which I will never forget that moments that I've spent with my family and my home in my country uh, well I grown up in a family full of love support and kindness and everything that a kid needs I, I grew up with my two brothers and one sister, mm -hmm. and my big brother was uh, always support me in every time during my education. Mm -hmm. I had many friends. You did? Yeah. There wasn't any good environment for kids to play or mm -hmm. to go outside with their friends, mm -hmm. but most of the time we, we just invite our friends to our house and make it dinner or lunch mm -hmm. to each other. That was our, I mean, interesting thing. When I was a kid, I was too good in writing things. Mm -hmm. And it was very comfortable for me to express my feeling through words or even some poems. But when I grew up, so it changed and my decision changed that I want to become a liar. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. And I can see how being a lawyer would also make sense if you were good with words and expressing yourself. Yes. yes. And I think also you, you mentioned before that you were very comfortable speaking to um, maybe a group of people. That's correct, yeah. Yes. Always conversation and speaking with people make me happy and mm -hmm. very comfortable mm -hmm. with that. I, w I was a very good speaker in my uh, into in my family, to mm -hmm. my family, mm -hmm. and yeah. And so they weren't surprised when you wanted to go into law. They weren't surprised because they knew all, all knew that I will choose something very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and is that because you are a hard worker? Because you like to apply yourself to those kinds of things. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. You were studying law, and at some point you also started uh, studying or also applying yourself to art as yeah. well. Yeah, that's true. That When I graduated from high school, so I wanted to become a lawyer. So I, uh, when I passed the Kankor exam, which is a national exam, mm -hmm. I had five options. And for all of that five options, I selected law university. Mm -hmm. For, uh, you mean instead of five different ones, yes. it was all law? All law. <laughs> all of them. All of them was law. There was no question. No question for that. <laughs> no, no second choice. Uh -huh. I didn't put any other choice there, so they, they selected a choice for me uh -huh. that you have to go to art institute. Oh. So I wasn't ready for that because for many years I've decided that I want to become a lawyer so yeah. my mother encouraged me that it's a skill you have to continue and if you want to 
continue law so we can we can support you mm. i continue both majors yeah. uh, art and law which is very different from each other very different what was that like for you to have two, it's almost like two different sides of your nature i would think yes in art you can you can express your feelings yeah. you can you can draw anything so but in law it was like limited yeah. But it was good. I mean, that was the thing that I really wanted to become. Yeah, and it was structure as well. So they yeah. were you were using different parts of your brain, yes. actually, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like a balance. You you yeah. want to become a lawyer, so you will face lots of difficulties. But yeah. in art, so you have many times to do many good things yeah. and express your feeling through that. Right. So it was like a keep balance in my life. How was it for you to be in an environment where all you knew um, to whatever degree was war that was going on in Afghanistan? That was part of the culture that you grew up in. It's completely right that my country had never a chance to breathe mm -hmm. in peace. Mm -hmm. Every time there was difficulties, every time there was, there was barriers. Uh, for us, for young generation, it was much harder to face all of those difficulties and go through all of that and uh, find their ways in their lives and achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. It was much difficult for us, but we had hope for our country and for our future. You did. Uh -huh. And th that's why we, we continued and we, despite all obstacles that we had, all chaos that we had in yeah. our country, mm -hmm. terrorist attacks, everything, corruptions, but we wanted to fight against all of that mm -hmm. and have a good life for ourselves and for our future and for the next generation of Afghan people. Yeah. And so you, you, did you feel this as a pretty young child, you and your friends? Yeah, like you have n no good environment to play, no good environment mm -hmm. to go and limited of educational system yeah. or anything. Uh, it, was, it was very obvious that we faced lots of things yes. in our childhood yeah. and also when we were teenagers. Yeah. And were those constrictions even more so being a young woman? When you, when you grow up as a female, as a woman in Afghanistan, so it's completely difficult and different. Yeah you will face lots of difficulties, um, uh, many more ways that you have to go through on and you have to find your way mm -hmm. and you have to fight for your rights mm -hmm. to have your basic and primary and essential rights yeah. for yourself. Yes. It, it's much harder for that. And we, we did, we, Still now, we are women in Afghanistan. They are fighting for their rights. Mm -hmm. I learn and I educate myself mm -hmm. because my father was a strong believer mm -hmm. on education and um, being an educated woman in our society. Mm -hmm. So he believed me and I did. And for my entire life, my father and my family will be like my role model or my heroes. Mm -hmm. Was that unusual? Um, well, maybe unusual for some girls yeah. because they they didn't have privilege or I can say that support that yeah, I had. Right, right. Yeah. It depends on families too. Mm -hmm. Because of your interest in art, you somehow connected with the Art Lords, which started in, I believe, 2014 in Afghanistan. Yeah, yes. Art Lord was established in 2014, mm -hmm. and I joined Art Lords in 2017, March 22nd of 2017, which I cannot forget that date because it's our new year, and I started my artistic journey with Art Lords on our new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was, like a very good memory of my life. 
Yes, at the beginning of new beginnings. New beginnings, <laughs> yeah, that's, that, right. that's very that's right. beautiful for me, always. Yeah, yeah. and the Art Lords um, are remarkable. Uh, right. The organization is incredible. Um, and uh, one, of, one of the things is that um, they're focused on using art to heal four decades of, um, of war and trauma. Um, as a way to convert the negative psychological impact of violence on the people of Kabul. Um, and it did begin in Kabul yes. as well. Um, so can you talk a little bit about uh, your attraction to joining them and, and what that was like for you? It's an honor for me to be a part of Art Lords. It, it's really an honor for me. And I, when I was in Kabul, I always wanted to be a part of that big organization mm. and uh, when I joined that yeah we we did a lot of good works we we throw our art we express our feelings and concern of our people our society yeah. through our arts mm -hmm. and we had a very obvious message a clear message to both sides government and also other groups I mean Taliban that we have we have a uh, woman uh, that they are a part of our society and you cannot overlook their contributions mm -hmm. to um, formatting a, of our society. Mm -hmm. And we had many murals um, by image of prominent faces of Afghan women mm -hmm. that we have this part of our society that shouldn't be ignored. Mm -hmm. We did lots of big works um, in Kabul and also all over the country. Yes, and there, um, there are about 50, I think, art lords all together? 53 employees, yeah. 53. And um, just to clarify, too, art lords is kind of a take on warlords. Yes, it's the opposite, it's the opposite of war. Yes, yes, right. They did work for the United Nations, different embassies, the Conferences for National Endowment for Democracy, UNICEF very big, so I know that the founders had quite a big vision for Art Lords in general, and it looks like things were moving along incredibly well, and you were having a big impact. You had to leave Afghanistan because the Taliban came in after the, um, the evacuation of Kabul in August of 2021, and so from there, you went in different, to different places in the world, but wherever you went, you are still expressing yourselves through murals and through artwork. Yes, that's true. That when I left my country and I went to Albania and I spent eight months there, and we didn't stop our works, so we did a paint mural there, mm -hmm. and we we just continue our yes. works there. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit, um, Nagina, about leaving Afghanistan, what that was like for you? It's, it's very hard for me that I left my Afghanistan. I had to leave my Afghanistan because of a barbaric group, a terrorist group, which even though they didn't or they don't belong to that geographic place, it's very hard for me. Mm -hmm. that I leave everything behind and I went to other countries as a different identity, as a refugee. Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget that day, 24th of August, 2021, mm -hmm. which was very hard for me to leave my country, which I had many dreams for that. I wanted to work there, I, I studied there, and I wanted to be a part of that society. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And your family as well. And my family. Yes. For, the, for many reasons, it's very hard for me to, to leave that country. Yeah. Yes, and I think that it gets us back to that question of identity, you know, how um, you know, you, your identity was so closely entwined with your country. Yes, yeah. that's true that my identity, so 
like in Afghanistan, I was citizen of that country. Mm -hmm. That was my home, my, mm -hmm. my everything. But when I, when I leave my country, I, I have a new identity for myself as a refugee. Mm -hmm. Be because now I'm in the process, uh, process of my paper, immigrant, immigration paperwork here. So I don't know what will be the response in here. So, uh, like, I cannot go back to my country. I, I mean, it's not about that I cannot go to my country. That I don't want to go to that country. I don't want to see the Taliban flag waving above of my country mm -hmm. and seeing them have a leadership on my country, it's, it's very hard for me, and I don't want to see that. Right. That's why I, I, I don't want to go there. So right. I don't want to go to my country. Yeah, you went to Albania, but you also um, almost went to Canada? Because when we went to Albania, and there wasn't, there was nothing clear to us that mm. what will happen to our cases, will they, give us visa to come to United States or no. So there was many things and we had like two choice of Canada or United States if you want to choose Canada. So you will have a, a clear vision of your war paperwork. Mm. In three months you can, you can be a citizen of Canada. Oh. But if you want to uh, select United States so it will Maybe it will take one year. Uh, it wasn't clear for us, mm -hmm. or maybe it's impossible to come here. But because my sister was here, so I, I choose that I want to go United States. Yes, and she, so your sister was already here? Was already here, yeah. Was she in Brattleboro? Yeah, she was in oh. Brattleboro. Oh, that must have been really wonderful. Yeah, that's yeah. very wonderful for me, for both of us, yes. that we have each other. Yeah. You know, I think for any of us, to um, the fact that, that you, you folks are here and that you're establishing yourselves here, um, but the story that you just told about uh, fleeing your country, you know, taking refuge in another country, and then deciding, you know, going to Canada or the United States, if any of us can imagine what that is like, you know, it's something we can't imagine. And it's very hard. Yeah, making that yeah. kind of decision. decisions. And you, and you were traveling, I think, with a backpack. Yes, that's true. That I, I I left my country with a small backpack, and on that time, I I wanted to collect everything, every good memories, mm. my families, my country, my flag, everything. I wanted to collect everything and wanted to be with myself. But I couldn't. <laughs> it was very hard for me mm -hmm. to leave that country with a small backpack. Yes, I'll bet it was. Yes, something, again, something that is very hard for us to imagine. Um, but bringing the flag with you was an important piece of that. It was very important for me because when I was grew up in Afghanistan, so I, I was grew up with all these things with three colors of my flag, mm -hmm. black, red, and green, and, and many good memories. So how can I forget those memories? Mm -hmm. and it's very unfair to have, mm -hmm. to be in this situation. You have to leave your country because of what? Because of those people? Mm -hmm. Because those people who did not or don't have any respect for humanity, for women, mm -hmm. yesterday I, I, I read a title that no longer Afghan women can go to universities. Yeah. Yeah. It's very heartbroken for me. Yeah. It's a very dark day for Afghans and Afghanistan. Yes. And for me, which I'm, I'm Afghan woman, I'm here and, and I feel like hopeless. Mm. And I feel like guilty that I cannot do anything for my country. Mm -hmm. For those girls that they want to go to university and want to become mm -hmm. educated person and want to do something for their society. Yeah. And I cannot do anything for them. Mm -hmm. It's a very 
hard moment for me for yeah. my in my entire life yeah. and why we should be on this place and why we should lose everything so easily and so quickly so quickly yes and those rights that we fought or battled for many years yeah. and it wasn't easy for us to achieve those rights right. it's a very primary essential right to go to university or go to school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nowadays we cannot do that. Right. Yes. And it, it's very hard, hard moment for me. I, I cannot describe how it is. And yeah. I, I want to express my feeling to all Afghan women that I'm very sorry for all these things that you're going, going through that moments. And I cannot do anything. Yeah. And also, I think, Nagina, the fact of you being here and the fact of people back in your homeland knowing that, knowing that you're here, knowing the art, art lords are out and doing the good work for Afghanistan and still uh, carrying that is a very big thing. Yeah. And an influence, an influence for, for all of the people of yeah. Afghanistan who see that as their homeland. Nagina, in regard to all of that, um, that you're talking about uh, being separated from your family and from your homeland, you said, I don't know where this was, but you said, even though we are far from our home, far from our people, we raise our voices for our people. And I think that's wherever you are. We don't want to be quiet and just be witness of what's going through our country and we we always want to raise our voice and advocate for our people especially afghan women mm -hmm. that they are going through a very hard time and i know how incredibly difficult these days are for afghan women mm -hmm. and for us that we are witnessing that the good thing is that maybe the only thing that we can do is to raise our voice and have and be the voice of voiceless persons. Yes. So that's the only thing that we can do. And Art Lord is now doing the same thing that we want to, despite far away from our country, our families, but m maybe it makes make us more powerful or strong and give us more strength to go through all these difficulties and be voice of our people. Yes, yes. And you're informing us as you go along. You know, I think that that's, that's something that you see. Um, I'm sure that you see this when you're doing a mural, you know, or you're doing various other ways of connecting with people in this community. You're letting us know what's going on in that part of the world. First-hand yeah. information, which we don't get a lot of. Yes, that's true that in Afghanistan, there's many things going, but uh, in media, they don't publish it or that's we right. cannot see it, mm -hmm. we cannot hear it. Mm -hmm. So, because our families are in Afghanistan, so we know better and we can feel it better. That's right. And th that's why we want to be the voice of our right. people and yeah. the voice and the eyes too you know when yeah. a mural is a very big thing yes and there's that wonderful mural of the two eyes the a women's eyes you know and so we are looking at you is yes. a lot of what that is saying or see us that's or we see you yeah that was very a strong message very very strong message and that message goes out you know, that yeah. reverberates out. I'm very happy that Brattleboro, Vermont, they call as New Vermonters, which is very heart touching. Oh, good. Yes. That's good, yes. Yeah. And you've had, um, I know you've had um, a lot of support with different organizations. Um, the uh, ECDC, the Ethiopian Community Development, um, the Multicultural Community Center here on Burge Street, 
um, the Brattleboro Development Corp Corporation and SIT, I know, have been really key players in bringing things together. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, because I know because of this, because of sort of the groundswell underneath supporting, um, I think it was 100 refugees who yes. came to Brattleboro, um, there are so many things that have become available for you to resettle, literally. Yes. Um, I can say more than 100 refugees are now here in mm -hmm. Brattleboro, and they found their new home and new hopes, and yeah. also families here. Yeah. And ECDC and other cooperation agencies, they, they came together and make a very big community for Afghan yes. refugees here, so they can feel very comfortable and do their works mm -hmm. and feel this place as their new home, mm -hmm. which is very appreciated and mm -hmm. very, we are very grateful for having this much support and love from this community, yeah. which is very, very great and very good for us. I, I always uh, mention this, that uh, without cooperation, without, supportive, uh, without supporting of this community, it wouldn't have been possible for mm -hmm. us to achieve all these mm -hmm. achievements, mm -hmm. which is very big for us. And now yeah. we, can, we can find our ways That's to great. our new life. And you are, are actually doing some work at ECDC, is that right? Yes, yeah. I'm working there. Yeah. yeah, what do you do? I'm working there as a case manager, uh -huh. working with refugees. Uh -huh. And so you are, as you are being helped, you are helping others get their feet on the ground as yes. well. Yes. And is it families or individuals? Most of them are families, mm -hmm. but but ECDC cover all all of them. Uh, I mean, singles and yes. families. And and you find that fulfilling work. It to, is. Yeah. Yeah, it is like working a refugee working for a refugee. Yeah. Yeah. It's like wonderful. Yeah helpful and I and I really love it working with people having conversation yes. with them yeah and and you're becoming part of this community I think that's one thing that we're beginning to see in town you know we see you on the streets we see you working you know with the art lords on the murals and uh, the center on Burge Street is offering all kinds of different things for you from yoga to English as a second language and there's a whole sewing brigade yeah. as well, right? There's many opportunities yeah. for, for new Vermonters there. You also worked with this great organization, Boston-based organization, Tape Art, where um, you would use uh, semi-adhesive tape. They were intentionally temporary murals, but you have people working on them with you, and so doing that kind of joint effort is so powerful as well. We had a very good collaboration artwork with tape arts and we uh, rebuilt our those murals that was whitewashed in Kabul, Afghanistan. So it was a collaboration artwork with Michael and Leah and we, uh, we rebuilt our murals in here uh, in Brattleboro yes. to have their new home yeah. and rebuilt those good memories. Yeah. Yes. That was um, the first mural that you ever did? Yes, the first mural that I did in Kabul, it was female orchestra band, Zohra Orchestra, and that was the first mural that Taliban whitewashed it, and it was very hard for me. Yeah. And uh, But it was very strong, strong message and clear message. Um, that's why we wanted to rebuild those uh, memories, mm -hmm. those messages mm -hmm. that we are far away from our countries. Now we are here, but we have our art right. that we can we can do. We can rebuild that one, and yeah. and we can advocate for our people, for Afghan women, wherever we are. Yes. So that's why we did it here. You also did a great collaboration with. Um, uh, Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center, um, Kirsten Marcy, I believe, who's the manager of education and community engagement programs there. We had a very great evening event uh, 
at the museum with other refugees and their achievements by helping of Christian from museum and there we showed our artworks we had an exhibition we had a food and all all achievement of refugees mm -hmm. from one year that they have been here no, that's really wonderful so it wasn't yet it was a celebration it was a celebration yes yeah yes and also epsilon spires you did another evening similar to that where you had the traditional food. What, what brings people together better than food, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we want, so everyone knows about Afghanistan, but not actually. Right. We wanted to have a movie show together mm -hmm. to have more uh, perspective of Afghanistan and their life. And it was based, based on a true story. And we wanted to have a, a food taste of, like a traditional food taste. Mm -hmm. And it was very wonderful night for us. And it was very successful for us. The other art lords that are here, Marwa, Mitra, Sura, and Abdullah, yes. the five of you are here together. And you are going by your first names. Yes, we are going by our first names because like, uh, there's many reasons we didn't sh mention our last names. Mm -hmm. It's all because of security reasons, mm -hmm. because we have family back in Afghanistan, so ha right. we have to be like, uh, be careful of right. what we are doing or that's what right. we are saying. But right. uh, yeah, that's why we are only goes by our first names. Yes, the t Taliban coming through and destroying your murals when you were still there, were you face to face with them? Did you see them? Did you interact with them? Um, I didn't face to face them because I was so scared. I, when Taliban took over the country, so I was there for one week before I left Afghanistan. So I, I didn't even want to see their faces yeah. and their flags. And I didn't want to see them. Mm -hmm. But when I wanted to leave the country, uh, yeah, I faced them once, mm -hmm. and I cannot forget their faces. Mm -hmm. That that was the bad memory because when you want to leave your country for whatever reason is it is, you want to have a very good view of your country. You want to go to many places, have memory with those places, mm -hmm. but. Mine was different. Mine was very difficult. Mm -hmm. It wasn't by my choice. Like that's right. Yeah, I had to leave my country. Yes. Yeah. 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 You were forced to yeah. flee. Yes. Which is very different. Very different. Very different. And so you know, being here in Brattleboro, um, getting the support that you need, getting the a lot of the skills of just being in a different country culturally and how things work. Um, I think one of the things that is very helpful for us here to remember is um, how much you bring to us. You know, um, there are all of these services and things that you know are in place now, um, but I think you know you've been here for a while, and um, to see how our community is a living and breathing thing, and to um, to welcome in new people to our community who are bringing all of these things that we bringing art and cuisine and uh, different kinds of um, the movies that are ex explain what the culture is like for us to understand that this is such a positive thing for us here in Brattleboro and we're seeing it on the walls <laughs> yes. which is really terrific yeah. and fabulous thank you Nagina thank you so much thank you so much thank I you I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being with us and telling your stories and letting us know, giving us a picture of what your life has been like, what it is like now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. Um, I hope that this was uh, a wonderful show, as wonderful as it was for me to be here with Nagina and to hear about her story and what life is like outside of our little town here. And 
how much impact it has to be able to see the artwork, to be able to meet these people, to be able to be with them, and to have them as part of the bigger Brattleboro community. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Thank you.